You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That funky tune. I can listen to that tune. For hours, but we have to start the show. It's time for TWIFO, This Week in Futures Options, the program here on the old network where we break down all things on the other side of the options fence. Your, go your gold, easy for me to say today, your gold, your corn, your crude, your soybeans, your lean hogs. You never know what's going to make it onto the show. Nat Gas, what's going to be lighting up our collective tapes. Let me break it all down for you here on TWIFO. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. As well as, of course, from the ever scintillating options inside a radio network. If you want to go back and say, hey, what was going on in a particular commodity option product on a particular given week? Well, we got that covered for you. Let's go check out our archives available on theoptionsinsider.com or subscribe to us in iTunes or wherever you like to get your favorite programs. Tune in, Stitcher. If you're on one of those outlets, go ahead and give us a review. We never really uh, talk about those or ask for those, but it's always fun to see what you guys are thinking in those outlets. So wherever you listen, if it's in iTunes or somewhere else, you want to leave us a nice glowing review you say, hey, Nick's the best thing since sliced bread, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Head on over there. And if you're not a fan, hey, don't leave a review. It works, too. <laughs> We're just kidding. You can leave whatever you guys like over there on your outlet of choice. We don't always get a chance to talk about them or read them on the show. Uh, we have so many other outlets for you guys to give us more immediate feedback. We don't look at a lot of the iTunes reviews, but every now and then it's worth looking. And, of course, I know a lot of those outlets like those reviews, too, for their, their rankings and the other ways that they sort the program. So however you get us, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, wherever, Leave us a nice review and uh, let people know what you think of the show. If you don't like it, hey, you can share that too if you, if you are so inclined. <laughs> All right, then. And joining me on the old program today, the aforementioned Mr. Nick Howard, the founder of Bantix Technologies and creator of a little platform we like to use a lot around here called Quick Strike. Nick, welcome back to TWIFO, this week in Futures Options. Hey, man. What's up? I'm here. 
Uh, I'm here. We're a little early, but I, I'm here early because we ha I have to leave and go somewhere else remote. And it would have been too hard. So this way, we're going to be in one place. You always throw me the curveballs here on Twifo, sir. You make me do it myself last week. You're changing up our time this week, by the way. Yes, I want to welcome all you guys joining us live via Mixler. I know it's a challenge to keep up with when the show is coming on. We're changing the times around 1.30 now as opposed to 3 o'clock. We'll probably, we should probably be back to our regular time slot next week. If this works better for you, let us know, though. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll investigate uh, changing that up. We thought end of the day is always, always better for a nice kind of look back on the totality of the week after most things are closed, but... You never know. If he, if a different time works better for people, maybe we'll mix it up. And again, you can join us live via Mixler, M-I-X-L-R. Check out uh, the link we always tweet out there in our various platforms. And you can find it if you have it from previous shows. Just bookmark it or follow us in that Mixler app, and you'll get notified whenever we go live. Uh, Nick, since you weren't on last week, I will give you the, uh, the pride of place. I'll let you choose what we hit on first. It was a bit of a quiet week until this afternoon. In fact, we were just doing Vol Views about an hour ago, and the market started popping to the downside. Vol started popping to the upside. Things are lighting it up. The commodities are moving as well. W where are you feeling in your bones that you want to start this week? I was going to go with our regular regular uh, order, but then I heard our funky funky tune for the show, and it said gold, crude, corn, and beans. So I think we should go gold, crude, and beans if we get time. Let's let's follow that order. <laughs> All right. Let's go with how the man lays it out then in the intro. He is a wise fellow, that announcer man. Uh, let's kick it off. Yeah, gold is a good place to start because gold is popping right now. Thanks to our friend, Miss Hillary Clinton. Yes, uh, the, the candidate for president of the United States. Like I was mentioning, it's kind of a quiet week, not a heck of a lot going on. Then right about halfway through the session today, listeners, if you're listening to this after the fact, uh, Ms. Clinton, uh, apparently the FBI reopening that investigation. The S&P was taken on the chin off about half a percent after having rallied about half a percent, so off about a full percentage point a swing there, uh, kind of gaining some of those losses back a little bit again. The VIX also popping up to about 17. That meant, of course, in the height of the sell-off, the height of the uncertainty, people were flocking into gold. Uh, gold was popping a bit as well, net up about, oh, about 15 handles or so uh, on the week. But it has been interesting to watch, particularly in the last... Uh, hour to hear some of those uh, some of that paper coming into the call side we'll get to that in a little bit overall net open interest up about three and a half percent on the week we still have maybe a little bit of data coming in from all this hillary love so we'll see maybe net how that impacts everything uh, going forward and like i said futures up about 15 or so handles net uh, on the week and things that were lighting it up well vol actually up, up a little bit as well out there in the the front month up about two handles again front month gamma vol you know the deal there uh and then you go a little bit farther out it comes off a wee little bit so about about a point or so across the board again some of that a reflection of this uh, recent uh, recent surge uh the calls have been leading the dance from a volatility skew premium perspective so as we move up uh, the strike handles there you're going to see a little bit of inflation in vol anyway and that's kind of what we're seeing right here and in terms of where the action was over this past week kind of as we've expected of late out there in gold and certainly given today's activity uh, the lion's share coming in that front month about almost two-thirds of the overall volume coming out there in that dece contract with uh, the number one with the bullet strike if you're saying was it all was it all calls yeah pretty much was all calls out here uh, this week and particularly today uh, with uh, the dece 1300s Leading the charge with about 6,500 contracts uh, spread fairly evenly, but a decent amount coming in today, about 1,300 that coming in today as well. Also, the 13 halves, uh, so fairly far out of the money, about at least 50 plus 65 or so handles out of the money, depending on where you're looking on the futures structure there. Uh, those are also lighting it up this week as well with about 6,300, about about nearly half of those coming today, about 2,500 or so, uh, almost 2,600 coming today alone. So a lot of action on the 13 halves. So number one, number two are the 1,300 and 13 halves out there in D's, not to be forgotten. Also the 13 quarters, the kind of split in the difference strike there, <laughs> also coming in uh, pretty hot and heavy on the list as well with about 3,000, over a third coming today as well, 1,300 out there as well. So if you add up those three strikes just in D's there alone, you're talking about 6,000 contracts. Uh, coming in uh, those three call strikes in Dece today versus only about 2,000 or so, a little 2,500 or so coming in the previous days out there. So 
a good chunk of volume and good increase out there in some near term and pretty far upside calls as well. 13 half is a, is a pretty aggressive level uh, for Dece out there. The puts are not completely forgotten as well. We also saw about 3,500 or so of the 1240 puts. An interesting strike. Uh, again, we've seen usually see see the liquidity coalescing around those even handles. So the 12 half level, but that wasn't the case this week. 1240 lighting it up with about 3,400, almost 3,500 going up. About 1,500 of that come in uh, today as well. So puts were not... Uh, completely forgotten out there. Uh, it has been interesting to watch that of late. And again, the uh, the skew uh, fairly uh, fairly unched <laughs> this week net on the thing, which is kind of surprising, all things considered. Uh, but again, that kind of also reflects that calls have kind of been heavy a little bit out there for a while. So it's going to take a little bit a little bit more to really to really boost those up uh, fairly substantially. But that said, it's going to be interesting to watch how gold unfolds and how this. All of this kind of plays out. I mean, Nick and I are kind of doing this show live now as this news is unfolding. We haven't had a chance to really digest the full breadth uh, of the Hillary investigation, what it means, the, the serious nature of it, or it seems like, given the market reaction, the market is pretty uh, pretty concerned about it. So it'll be interesting to see as we have a little more time to digest it and see how this impacts out there in the precious metals. But that said, Mr. Nick, we don't do that on this show. We go right off the cuff here as we're seeing the activity. So what, what are you making of today's and indeed this week's activity out there and all things shiny and precious well i'm watching it now too and it's it's coming back off a little bit so uh you we might see vol come in a little so uh you know the news comes out market reacted i think we have a little bit of time left before uh uh before we close up here but uh the futures definitely backed off from their highs around t- uh, 12 uh, 82 or 83 so they're they're down five from their high today um, you know, I, I did, um, I did see a little bit of the news. I didn't read, like you were saying, I didn't read in, into too much detail, uh, that was what was going on out there, but, uh, they said they just, I think it was a new batch of email. So they were going to take a look and see, um, uh, to see if there's anything classified in there. So, you know, it's that initial knee jerk reaction to, uh, it's going to be bad stuff and, you know, it may be a recipe exchange. You never know. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But we did get, like you said, we got a pretty good pop in the vol and no change in skew. So that was really what I was looking for when, uh, when we started to talk about, uh, deciding to talk about gold first, uh, all the markets on the upside still look like they're in line with where the curve was. So uh, our skew, you know, we were trending pretty solidly within a very, very tight range this week. Um, so, uh, you know, outside a little pop and vol, and that's just, you know, that kind of probably, probably something to do a little bit of illiquidity, don't you think, at the end of the day or the end of the day on Friday, at the end of the week on top of it. So, you know, maybe there were some buyers in there that pushed it up a little bit higher without uh, necessarily having uh, much out there to offer. But, um you know, skew still a little bit of a bias uh, to the call side. Um, you mentioned some of the interesting stuff that was going on in the in the trade this week. And again, just keeping in mind, you know, we haven't seen much of a shift or change in the open interest, both in the volume uh, trade. I, I didn't look back a, a few weeks, but you know, still still sort of a call bias in the in the volume and a call bias uh, on the open interest as well, right? We have our put call ratio is well below one; it's below a half. Um, overall, though, a half in the front month and then, um, you know, in the 80s and 90s uh, or in the 80s, uh, you know, going out a little bit further. So, uh, again, like we always talk about on Friday, you know, we most of this most of this upside uh, today's change is uh, 15 uh, bucks on, on the on the gold. And, and, and that's um, that's what we're up for the week. So we're really looking at everything happening today. So. Again, uh, we'll have to see what happens from a follow-through standpoint. My guess would be if there's no – nothing's going to happen over the weekend in terms of news I would expect. So I would think that before bef- this stuff will close, the vol will close maybe a little bit lower uh, off of where we're seeing the highs right now and then probably give it back next week if it becomes a non-issue. Uh, you know, crude crude came off too right after that as well, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But, um, you know, like we, like we said – Ball up a little bit, but generally was going to be pretty steady to, to nothing. And and w- again, that sort of reiterates. In fact, it was going to be down on the week before the news came out. And that reiterates what we were talking about. You know, these are low vol levels in the gold with low levels in the future. So, you know, what, like we've been always uh, always been sort of talking about hedged, hedged downside, uh, get you a low volatility level and a play on the move up in the gold. And if you continue to go uh, uh, down on the break, you got a low level volatility where you uh, can get some bang for your buck because you uh, got a low vol that's hedged 
and you can just trade out of that as a package. So um, that's what we're seeing on gold here today. Nothing, nothing exciting except in the last like 90 minutes. But you know, I think, um, which is always fun, is because I, I gotta believe it's a, a, it's a liquidity thing too. I mean, did you see uh, Murphy's bleachers today already? At 7:45, it was jam packed. <laughs> that's true. So that's a lot of the Chicago trading community up on yeah. the north side today. Uh, yeah. else otherwise engaged shall we say <laughs> so what does our guy say he says uh, he says gold and crude right so we have to go crude next i believe so let's kick yeah, it off Yeah, crude crude is the next one that's <laughs> let's right let's kick it off in crude land gotta gotta go how the announcer says it right otherwise it just doesn't seem right uh, moving off to wti we've been kind of talking about uh, uh, upside on crude a lot lately is it going to hang above the 50 handle where we broke back down around it or kind of vacillating around that 50 handle now again depending on where you're looking out there uh, on the term structure, but net on the week, the future's off a couple of handles uh, kind of across the board, uh, giving back a little bit, right around 4% or so, depending on where you're looking out there on the term structure. That equates to a little bit of uh, a little bit of a spike in, in vol, a couple of handles, depending on where you're looking. But still, even with that move, again, vol fairly low on the lower end of the recent range. And a lot of you guys out there like to watch uh, the uh, the commodity VIXs as well, like OIV and OVX, and both of those are hovering in the uh, the mid to somewhat elevated 30 handles, which is about 50% of where they were just uh, back in the in the height of the craziness uh, back in February or so. So commodity vol, even though it's moving up a little bit this week, still uh, fairly uh, fairly low on the on the longer term range. It's got a ways to go before things start lighting it up out there again. But we might see that start to change if we continue this sell off. As we said before, puts are still where the elevated volatility is out there in the WTI skew. And that's, as we said on the LSFO show, if listeners had a chance to check it out, the one we did, Nick, with our friends over there at CME last week, live from the FIA conference here in town. And it was kind of surprising how strong and pronounced that bid still is going going pretty far out, going out about, uh, about a year or so. Uh, so people still have long-term structural concerns with crude, despite the fact that the bulls have started to emerge a bit of late. We've seen, you know, in the near term portion of that volatility term structure, the calls have have sparked to life. They're much more aggressive, much more bid up, much higher premium levels than they have been uh, in pretty much for the better part of the last year or so. Uh, so that's been an interesting change of pace. But longer term, again, you go farther out. It still is uh, the calls have more life than they did. Don't get me wrong, but it still is puts uh, leading the dance out there. Speaking of leading the dance uh, again out there in WTI, about uh, about nearly two thirds of the volume uh, coming in that front month. If you're concerned, if you're curious again, as we are here on the show, why that hasn't translated into WTI weekly? We talk about that on the LSFO show as well. So check out what the folks at CME have to say on that, including the guy who heads up their options over there. He has some interesting thoughts on why that hasn't really translated yet and what they're trying to do, what they're trying to do, I should say, to address that. Overall, open interest up about a little over four, about four and a half percent over the past week. And the uh, number one strike, number one hot option with the bullet this week uh, puts, again, leading the dance. Not, a, not, a, not too surprising given the fact that we saw a bit of a sell-off this week. Uh, and the strikes were also probably about where you'd expect, right around the 45 handle. Because, uh, again, we broke through the 50 handle, at least in the, in the front portion there. Uh, again, floating around 50 elsewhere. About 28,000 uh, close to actually a little more going up. So a little more have gone up since we started the show, actually. Total of actually 30,000 going up now out here in uh, the Dece uh, 45 puts, reflecting, again, as Nick was alluding to, a little bit of a, little bit of a spike of activity here. Uh, to uh, to close out the day, all related to our friend Miss Hillary, and those puts actually doing of that thirty thousand, about a third of that volume coming today, right around ten thousand contracts, ninety nine hundred and four, uh, to be precise. So dominating the rest of the week from a volume perspective. So certainly uh, there was some near term downside concern out here in crude, as you might uh, might expect. Number two, also in that same range, the Nov, excuse me, Dece, uh forty six uh, puts out here. Uh, with about 21,000, nearly 22,000 uh, going up out there. Not quite as much of a spike in volume today, about 4,000 of those contracts going up today. And then we kind of drop off a little bit to the 53 calls, the Dece 53 calls. So there was a little bit of call life uh, with about 19,000 and some change going up. The lion's share of those actually going up earlier this week with about 5,500 and 4,400 going up on Monday and Tuesday, respectively. A lot of that opening, so some opening positions out there 
again, reflecting near term, the calls are still very active. You got to go a little bit farther out to get to all that uh, juicy, juicy put love. And then down to uh, the uh, no, D55 calls as well with about 19,000 of those. It's, again, pretty heavy towards the early part of the week with a good spike on Thursday as well. About 6,500 of that 19,000 going up on Thursday overall. And Nick, I know you've been watching Crude quite a bit and... Uh, <laughs> I think you have a nice little, uh, nice little, nice little refrain for what you've been seeing out there in the WTI skew. So I will let you have at it, sir. What is the quick skew saying for for WTI this week? Well, I think you alluded to it a little bit. I mean, the calls have definitely definitely tightened up in the in the front December contract. So we're seeing that uh, the twenty five delta call is just about the same uh, volatility level as the at the money. Puts are obviously still bid, but we're, you know, we saw that draw up uh, a little bit. Um, and as you also mentioned, you know, Jan, Feb, March, uh, April, May, June, all across, you know, out the next year, puts are still, you know, puts are still bid and the calls are still cheap. But, you know, most of the reaction, as you might expect, is going to take place in the front, right? Because that's where, the, that's where, um, um, that's where the news is going to hit is in that part of it. Now the rest of the curve will move obviously, but the news is going to hit in that front part of the curve. And that's where half of the open interest is. So, uh, again, I mean, I, I'm, I look at it, I, I'm, I try to be fairly pragmatic about the whole thing. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff came out this week, the rig counts, the, uh, the EIA report, that's the, uh, uh energy, uh, information administration report, you know, all that stuff comes out and, and I, I just kind of look at it just from a you know thirty thousand foot view, looking at the where where the stuff's trading. You know, volume this week is pretty much it's got a slight bias to the puts, um, and uh, the OI overall is still you know biased to the calls. But you, you know we we haven't moved. I mean, if you take away uh, if you take away today, um, in the crude, and if I'm going to go back and look at this week's chart here, you know we basically. What did we do? We were basically traded up around 51 and we traded down to 49. So we were pretty much the last three days we were trending between 49 and 50 without much, you know, without much craziness going on. So I still think, like I said, I, I'm, I look at where the, you know, sort of the range in the charts like everybody else does. And then I'm looking at our open interest number. So on the December contract, the 30 put is the biggest open interest, but the next biggest is the 45 put. And on the upside, it's the 50 and the next is the 55. So I still, and, and we'll talk a little bit about this in the beans when we when we get there, if we get there. I still look at, you know, as long as you're sort of inside these ranges, 45 to 55 here in the crude, and and to be perfectly honest with you, I, I mean, we had a little bit of, uh, we had a pop today uh, in the crude, and part of it has to do probably with this last uh, with this last little break that we had. I'm surprised that the vol's up, to be honest with you, just given that we're within this range, and and no news has seemed to really push it down too far toward the 45 or up to up through like past the 53 or toward the 55. So uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not just a regular guy looking at the crude market. I'm not seeing anything spectacular happening. In fact, at this level with these vols that it's trading right now, I think it's a, a strangle sale personally, just because you're getting somebody's giving you some, some premium in the market right now. And that has to be, again, I'm going to go with, with illiquidity. That's why the thing bounced. People came in and buy, and there was not a lot of offers there. Um, with the news and uh, and this is what we're seeing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, vol up. Half of it though is for uh, is coming from today, uh, and that's that was going to be what I was going to talk about in general. Is I was surprised vol was up prior to this last little bump. I didn't think it would be up given that we kind of came back off of 51 and then back below 50 and without any really follow through on the uh, on the downside. And like uh, I tweeted, I don't know if anybody saw my I I tweeted. Uh, the skew remains the same with the YouTube link because the song, as with the YouTube to Led Zeppelin's, the song remains the same. So just trying to get a little, you know, fun on a Friday afternoon. A little bit of fun before Hillary decided to give us some fun. I was just joking with some people on Twitter who were writing in about this Hillary thing, and I, I don't really see 
a huge causality between a Hillary Clinton email investigation and buying WTI puts. Some people out there are, are suggesting that. <laughs> uh, kind of a bit of a stretch, but still interesting nonetheless. Something, something's got to give some life to this market at the end of the week here. And uh, maybe, maybe some WTI folks are, are, are selling it off as a result. But it could be you're right as well. They're all up at... Uh, they're all up on the north side, and they're not, uh, they're not, they're not paying attention to their screens right now. <laughs> that could be a big, a big driver as well. Let's move on into the magical fruits, the other product that our announcer friend extols at the beginning of every episode. And this has been an interesting product to watch. Again, we've highlighted it a number of times over this past year, certainly since this show has started. More times than I thought we ever would, quite frankly, just because this product... Uh, continues to surprise and keep giving. We mentioned, of course, earlier this year, uh, the the favorable setup for collar traders out there buying puts, selling calls. It was very, very attractive. You can get good protection and good premiums for the calls on the upside without having to cut it too close to the vest. It was very attractive. That has since gone away. And now we're into a different mode out here in all things soybeans. Uh, the futures rallying again this week, about 20 handles net on the week, even though they were up a little bit more, I think, uh, intra week there. We're also into that funky period where we're seeing uh, the old crop rotation getting out of the new crop into the old crop out there we talked before about the ags how they have a very seasonal literally <laughs> in this case seasonal nature to them and the way the crops are harvested and planted and that's why we've always seen uh, such strong centers and, and nexuses of liquidity in different months in products like the ags more so than we see in other products which are pretty much just front month front month wti gold uh, pick your poison out there but the ags have kind of their own rules of engagement and uh, soybeans is certainly one of them and we've always seen that rotation playing off to where the lion's share of the action is and we're seeing that again right now net open interest uh, spiking up this week about 25 percent again that's somewhat due to the rotation and the numbers being a little funky out there uh, as a result but we're also seeing those numbers breaking down pretty interestingly uh, over this past week with actually about half of that uh, that coming in the actual a uh, couple of different rotations out here uh, breaking up here a couple of different ways which is always always kind of funky to watch out here and the vol also up a little bit as well, about a point or so, unless you count that a uh, little bit of a barren data point out there <laughs> in the Feb cycle, I believe, out there. But still uh, interesting stuff here nonetheless. And in terms of what's been lighting it up with a number one with a bullet, it is the puts, ironically, even though uh, the product was a uh, rally ho mode uh, over this past week. It was uh, the nine half puts lighting it up to the tune of about, oh, what do we got here? About uh, 17,000 of those coming. The lion's share coming actually on Wednesday, about 6,000. So we have a little bit more than the third uh, going up on Wednesday. A lot of that opening actually as well on Wednesday, which inflects some, some interesting activity there as a result of these futures. Kind of vacillating around a lot this week. Number two, a kind of bit of a tie with the 940 puts as well with about 13,000 again fairly evenly split uh, throughout the week except for today pretty anemic volume out there on that strike today and also the 1020 calls the calls getting a little bit of love out there as well about 125 again split fairly evenly with I guess the heavier on Wednesday and Thursday but very light today not much uh, volume out there uh, today as well again result of that uh, rotation out there as well I know Nick you've been uh, You've been sinking your teeth into soybeans a little bit more. You're getting a little bit more, become a little bit more of a soybean head out there of late. Certainly, as as we've been doing this show, we're getting a little bit more versed in, in how the skew shapes up. And I know you've been kind of starting to verse yourself on kind of that whole rotation of the new crop to the old crop and vice versa. Uh, so, so walk our listeners through what you've been seeing out there and what you've noticed this week as that rotation plays out, how that's impacting the things like the skew and the vol and everything else out there in soybeans this week. Well, first off, I we were having an, uh, a conversation in the office about all you can eat edamame at the sushi place around here. So that's oh. probably why I can go for some of that. Make, you want to send some of that sure, over here yeah. to the studios? Make sure the beans uh, beans got some love after the edamame got lots of love last night at uh, somebody's uh, daughter's birthday party uh, uh, at the sushi place. Anyway, um, yeah. So what you what we see is a big jump in the beans overall, like twenty four percent, and. You know, last week, uh, last week, the November contract rolled off. Right. So uh, and and anybody out there, if I say this wrong, because I'm learning and I'm and sometimes I'll get it backwards. But I think this is right. Um, you know, the November contract is considered sort of that new contract because 
the, or the new crop contract because that's when the harvest is taking place or just closing off right about now. So November contract rolled off last week. So they had a lot of OI, but we're seeing a big jump in the OI here now again. And uh, you'll notice if you're looking at the TWIFO report that December, which you would think is, hey, why isn't the December contract bigger because it's next in line? Well, the December contract just came on board in the, at the end of August, whereas the January contract, which has the most OI right now, uh, came on board um, a year ago last August. So now this DS Jan, Feb, March, May, July, August, September, I don't know if anything else will come in there because – I'm still, this is my first year really paying full attention to the to the expiration schedule. But those are all now those are all trading the harvested crop, right? So all those expirations are trading on what's already harvested out there. So that's the prices that are out there that people are going to pay for the stuff that's out of the ground. All right. So we saw, um, you know, we saw a big uh, a big percentage jump in the December. So I think what you're going to start to see now is uh, it almost had as big of a net volume as uh, or a net open interest change as the January did. So we'll start to see the December become like more of the true front month and um, and start to take over the OI leader. At least I would anticipate that will happen over the next couple of weeks. Um, as far as uh, any goings on there, but last week, I'm pretty sure we mentioned something about that $10 a bushel um, uh, point. And we said that not much would really go on until we got through that. Well, this week we got through it, right? So we were down, we're up 13, uh, or I'm sorry, we're today we're down 13. So we are up almost 30, uh, on the week, uh, up 19 from, uh, last week's close. So we did get through that 10, uh, handle and, uh, and now it, we're, we're probably as Mark and whenever Mark said, Whenever Mark says vacillate, I always want to. I always think of Beavis and Butthead, and and think of him saying he said vacillate. You, you do right? get a nice because, little chuckle to you whenever. Yeah, whenever I do. I, I do get a little chuckle out of that. <laughs> the so, inner um, eighth grader in you comes out. At, you know what? I, I don't think I've um, moved past that, to be perfectly honest with you. But in any case, you know, uh, you know, now I think we we are going to vacillate. Uh, around that ten dollar mark and see what's going to happen and and um, and now it'll just be you know supply it'll be demand for this stuff whether it's coming from uh, any other external sources I don't know how much um, and um, and some technicals right uh, I would imagine so we're we're in that sort of uh, uh, that 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 ten dollar point so it'll be um, it'll be interesting to watch how uh, the price action uh, is uh, taking place around that strike um, we saw. You know, vol is off today. It was up for the week. It's off today. So um, I would imagine that part of that is based on the fact that people, again, as always, people want rallies to carry through. They want breaks to continue. So when this rally didn't follow through, some of that volatility came off. So my expectation would be is if we don't follow through next week, we're going to see immediate little drop in volatility um, uh, as the market opens on Monday. And if you are looking along uh, with us at the report and you see a big jump in that February that's because last week that February contract did not have an at the money volatility. So that's why you see that big jump. So really all, all of the, you see the opening, this thing opened uh, this week as well. And if I go over to uh, the CME group website, that Feb came on board October 24th, right? So whenever you see this zero to 60 type of thing here, that's because um, that's because it's new. A new contract, and I wouldn't pay much attention to the skew in those because it, it tends to be biased one way or another. So, uh, so just ignore that one for now. Other than the fact that it is trading and there was opening, and that might be a good indication by looking at that strike or what strikes opened on that expiration to, to see where people are initially interested in a contract. So that's something to to, to be aware of as well. Um, so we have, uh, you know, a market rally and then losing some steam, uh, at the end of the week. So that's the, it would be expected that the vol would come off. I think the vol is going to come off a little bit more if we don't continue to follow through here. Um, you know, we've been talking about rent, right? Whether, whether this volatility is, uh, sustaining, uh, ownership and, uh, in, in pretty much, I think it has, uh, in the beans, meaning that, uh, 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 the market is moving enough. Well, I think it did it. I think it did like uh, maybe two or three of the days this week. So um, the volatility uh, had enough movement on the line that you could pay for it, basically. And what we're going to start seeing, what, what's going to be available in QuickStrike coming up, a little bit of a precursor, is we're gonna we're going to be plotting um, 
actual change in future over uh, the rent and then actual range in future over the rent. So you'll be able to see red and blue numbers to determine whether, um, you know, the actual one day change was supporting it, which sometimes is more important if you're just sort of uh, looking at, you know, you're not actively scalping. You can say the, the change in the market actually support it for today. And then the range is if you're more active in the market, you can look at the range and say, yeah, I could have, you know, if it was enough of, if there was enough of a range, I could have scalped around if I was long this stuff. And the, and the same goes if you're short, you know, you can say, well, it didn't support it. So I could be short this and I could sit on this for a while. So we're trying to give you like little numbers that are indications of, of whether that activity is, is supportive or supportive of owning or in favor of being short, that type of thing. So we could talk more about that in future shows. Um, when we, um, when we uh, actually release it out there. So again, um, went through the magical $10 mark. Let's see, we're probably going to have that as a base now, which typically if you're watching the beans, that's what's happening. And then our skew here is pretty flat. We went from slightly negative to slightly positive this week or a little bit more positive on the farther dated stuff. But I think right now we're going to want to keep an eye on a Dece, Jan, uh, Feb and March. Uh, contracts for the time being, since that's where most of the open interest is. And you'll start to see the open interest uh, in the November contract uh, increase a little bit because that's the now the new crop for next year as well. So um, I think uh, I think that's it for me and the beans, Mark. Magical fruit. You'll have to do something with the uh, with that rent concept. I like it. I've said that before. Maybe like a rent, rent payer of the week, something like that, to trade the product yeah. that's really paying the most rent. Uh, I like that idea, sir. So maybe we'll have to work that into the show going forward yeah we'll put i think what we could do is uh i'll try to find some space on the report so under the volatility section or maybe we'll have like a little new section that will just sort of give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if for that week you know over the you know how many days it paid for how many days it paid for itself type of thing you know so or a little chart that shows that we're working on that as well where we're charting uh actual uh uh actual uh amount of days that there was movement that supported um supported ownership versus not so we're gonna come up those are those are all in the pipeline so those are coming soon speaking of the pipeline we got to get to it this is usually the time of the show where we answer some of your questions don't blame me i want to it's nick he's got to go he's making us change the time and all his other crazy stuff so send your angry hate mail to him <laughs> nick at quickstrike.com uh but before we go as always listeners let me check back in with my cohort here, Mr. Nick. See what he's cooking up. He just mentioned the rent. Uh, actually, Nick, we didn't hit on the new products that are hitting QuickShack as well, the ratio uh, precious metals products there as well. So maybe outline those and whatever else is coming on the pike over there in the land of all things. QuickShack, I also met, forgot to mention, by the way, you guys can always follow along with us, of course, live at Mixler, but also generate your own reports anytime you want, day or night, 24-7, over there at cmegroup.com slash Twio. This week in options, you can do right now as you're listening to the show. If you want to see exactly what we're looking at for yourself, go do it. It's free. Kick the tires. See if you like it. All right, Mr. Nick, what's coming up in the land of all things Quick Strike? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I wanted to mention, too, that the last week, uh, the 24th of October, the new gold-silver ratio, gold-platinum, and gold-palladium spreads were released as futures contracts. So we added those this week to quick strike so you'll be able to go out and when those actually start trading be able to go look at the open interest tool and and the settlement levels and some historicals there's no options on those those are just underlying contracts but you know we do have historical charts for the ratios and for the spreads out there so um if you're interested in that stuff go ahead and take a look and those all should be out on the free tools uh, also being released this week uh, on the CME Group website is a quick strike cross correlation tool. And here you'll be able to look at benchmark products and, and how they relate to each other from uh, how they correlate, right? He said correlate, how they correlate to each other um, with not only implied volatility, but underlying volatility, all that kind of thing. So uh, that will be coming out. I think that's going to be available. I don't know if it'll be available Friday night, but probably sometime this weekend. So cross correlation tool, new gold uh, silver, gold, platinum, gold, palladium futures contracts. And then, um, like I said, if you are a user of the essentials version, you should see some columns in the pricing sheets and in, in the regular version, subscription version that will start to give you some ratios on, uh, uh, change over rent and, and, and range over rent. So you can see if, uh, this premium is worth owning or not. There you go, listeners. Check it out. Quick Strike. Or actually, just go to cmegroup.com slash Twio. And then you can also go to cmegroup.com slash Quick Strike, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E. 
and uh, log in there if you want to get the, all the cool tools we're talking about here with most of the bells and whistles. If you want the added stuff, uh, hit up Nick and his crew over there for the full suite, and they'll set you up. Sorry you didn't get a chance to get any questions. I know you guys have a bunch of them. We'll get to them next week. I know you get some of you guys in the chat room. <laughs> oh, friend Mark Brandt wants to backtest short eating straddles on every product every day. Well, you, sh- you should go backtest that and see how that performs and hit us up with the data and let us know. In the meantime, though, that's all the time we got for Twifo this week. On behalf of Nick and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading and streaming and subscribing. Of course, for sending in such great questions and for joining us live. We love you guys, too. And we'll see you next week, probably at the same time. Stay tuned to us. We'll let you know exactly what time, but probably our usual time slot, 3 p.m. Central, for more of This Week in Futures Options. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. Quick Strike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.